Hi, welcome back to my channel. This is Shady Atia, and today's presentation is about reproducibility in experimental research. Well, today's presentation is part of a playlist on experimental research. I hope you watched previous videos. Now, the audience of today's presentation is mainly researchers and scientists who are preparing a research thesis, dissertation, or uh, trying to publish in a conference or a journal. And for sure, the aim is to understand the factors and the approaches that needs to or that contribute to a good research reproducibility in order to improve the trustworthiness and quality of your research. Now, don't forget that we are in the series on experimental research, where we started earlier to talk about the different techniques about experimental research. And for sure, the content of the presentation, I will introduce the reproducibility, how to promote it and how to plan it in your work, how to report it, and finally some takeaway messages. So let's start with reproducibility, what it is. Well, what is reproducibility? It's simple. Re reproducibility is the ability to duplicate results using the same raw data. Why is it important? Well, it helps you to estimate any experimental error, it helps you to reproduce your experimental errors and report your confidence interval. And for sure, it will increase the precision of your results and it will ensure that analysis does not rely on subjective methods. In this sense, it's very important. And when you are reporting in any big journal or if you are going to publish in a big journal, you will find always that one of the aspects that they are looking at, how did you enhance the internal validity? And they will ask you explicitly to report on that. So if the experiment can be repeated with the same result, it has a high internal validity. Therefore, reproducibility is a very important indicator of quality for your research. Now, building up on why reproducibility is important, remind, let, allow me to remind you when we were talking about the co-founded variable. What is the co-founded variable? Variable that influences both the dependent and the independent variable, and we call it sometimes also extraneous variable. So actually, it's an external variable when we are not 100% sure what influence the, the, the experiment or our experiment result. So when we are doing experimentation, we, we ask ourselves what is actually causing the observed effect and what is making it so unclear. And also we ask ourselves always, uh, or we look at clarifying the relationship between the dependent and the independent variable. And in most of the cases, it's not a straightforward relation or association. So the so solution to uh, um, improve this problem or solve this problem is to invest in your control group. And this means that you have to have a treatment and control group equivalent prior to the treatment and any differences between the control condition and the experimental condition can be attributed to the effect of the independent variable. By that, you can neutralize the confounded variable. And in order to do that, you need to reproduce or re uh, 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 use the, the data of your experiment several times until you make sure that through this effect or those substances affect your final results. So, let me now take you to another very important concept many researchers get confused about, the difference between reproducibility and replicability. Well, they are not the same. Reprodu reproducibility is the successful reproduction of the original data by independent reanalysis using the same analytical approach. However, replicability is something else. Replicability is successfully finding the same or similar result in a new sample. So this is the main difference. Replicability here, we are talking about using new sample and using the same technique, while here we are about, when we are talking about reproducibility, we are talking about just reproducing the same work using the same original data. And as you can see in the work of Zach Scott, he is always trying to distinguish the replication and the reproduction, and he is basing his criteria based on the research question, the data, the model, the hardware, and the user. So those are very important aspects to take into account, and when you are talking about reproducibility, you need to be able to distinguish it from replicability. Now, let's go to some process or uh, apply, applied uh, ways of how to produce this uh, reproducibility and how to promote it in my work. First of all, you need to plan it. So when you are designing your research from day one, you need to think about reproducibility when you are conducting experimental research and you need to be able to uh, 
in, uh, introduce the reproducibility in different stages of your research. Now, how to plan reproducibility? First of all, you need to plan and design your experiment to allow to reproduce your work by yourself first and maybe by others on a later stage. And for sure, you need to make sure that your data is available so that others can use your work, follow it up, check it and build on it. And I advise you to watch the video about open data where I share with you some insights on how to publish your data set and make it available in repositories so that others can benefit from it and they can reproduce your uh, results using the same data set. Now you will ask me why should I do that? Well, it's very important because once you are sharing your data, you will have a higher web visibility, you will have a higher academic credit, people will trust you, and if you made any mistake during your processing of your experimental data, you will be protected because if this mistake, if you publish your data set, it means that you are open and transparent, and if there's any error or a mistake, it is most probably done uh, uh, unconsciously or not deliberately. So it's very important in this sense, I ask, I ask always researchers to share the data as much as they can so that it can be reproduced by themselves or by others. Now, how to plan my reproducibility? Well, you have to describe the method and experiment protocol that you are using in detail in your lab and this all need to be in your lab notebook and allow yourself to redo experiment the experiment after a while. Why this is important? Because when we are filling up our notebook or lab notebook and we are uh, trying to describe the procedure or the process that we follow to conduct uh, an experiment, sometimes we are not so thorough enough, resulting that when we try to reproduce it ourselves, we fail to do it. So the reproducibility uh, in this sense is very useful because it will also allow you to improve your way how you wrote your experimental protocol and verify that it is understandable and it can be after a while redone by you or by others. Also you have to ask other lab members if possible to reproduce uh, the experiment without your intervention and based on your protocols that you developed. In this sense you will allow others to do it and in many cases many reviewers ask you to reconduct or reproduce the experiment with a different, in a different lab or in a different research group. So invite other labs to reproduce and add them as co-authors in your paper is something that is very common in a scientific world. Now also one of the aspects that you can do during your uh, planning of reproducibility is to revisit your control condition. Why it's important to revisit the control conditions? Because this aims, the control conditions or the control group aims to minimize the impact of dependent variable and highlights false positive signaling, signaling whether an update is more effective than the original. It removes any confirmation bias or the tendency to force the hypothesis into uh, the results that you expected or wanted to have. And as you see in most uh, journals, they recommend you to have a description of the comparison uh, procedure and the comparison of the number of treatments you did with a single control. So here you can see always this idea of uh, control coming back and the Dunnett, uh, Dunnett's uh, test is a very famous test that allow you to compare uh, your uh, experimental sample with your control sample and in this sense make sure that you have a kind of um, um, neutralization of any extraneous effect or co-found uh, variable. Also what you can do is to do a round-robin test. What is a round-robin test? It's an experimental methodology to determine reproducibility of a process where tests are performed independently multiple times and the results are analyzed statistically to assess their variability. And there was a previous video about uh, the round-robin test. It's just a video before this video. I advise you to have a look at it. And here you can see, for example, a sample is analyzed and its properties is measured by same or different laboratories using same different methods and the analysis that are here conducted is mainly the analysis of variance to make sure okay what's the difference between lab 1 and lab 2 and lab 3 that are maybe located in different countries or in different regions while they are using the same protocol and once you are conducting those tests and you have your result in a certain acceptable margin or range of uh, similarity then you can say okay my experiment 
succeeded and passed the round robin test. If you want to know more about the round robin test, don't hesitate to watch the video above. Well, this brings me almost to the final part of my presentation now. How to report and show that I reproduced my work? Well, in this sense, we have to talk about reporting and error bias. Uh, sorry, error bars. Well, how to assure reprodu reproduction? Well, you have to identify and report any source of noise uh, or imperfection during the experiment. This is one of the best practices. You have to seek maximum transparency and clarity during your reporting, and you need to preferably publish your data set like I mentioned earlier. Also, how to assure reproducibility? You can repeat the experiment until the experimental error uh, or the error bars are minimal, as you can see. If I am experimenting and I am repeating the experiment and the result varies so hugely, uh, significantly exceeding 10% of variance, then I need to make sure to repeat my experiment to reduce this variance to have an, an acceptable range up to 5% or 3%. It depends on the field, on the accuracy of your experiment. Sometimes it's not even acceptable to have um, uh, one in the hundred uh, range of uh, variance. So you need to repeat your experiment until you reduce as much as possible those error bars and you need always to report them for sure. So reduce the experimental error, reduce the impact of disturbances and the erroneous factors and try to fetch the co-found uh, variable or the extraneous variables that influence uh, your research and for sure the control group will help you on that and distribute the effects of noise if you have noise make sure that you distribute its effect in an even way or and in a random way across all your samples and your uh, subjects that you are using in your experiment by that you can report professionally and show that you are really involved in the reproducibility and in the reduction of the range of error also, when you publish in big journals, for example, here the Journal of Nature, you will find them explicitly having a section called reproducibility, and you need to report on that. And here, all studies must disclose on reproducibility, even when disclosure is negative. So it's very important to take this into account that sooner or later you will be asked about the reproducibility, whether internally in your reporting, in your lab notebook, in your protocol, uh, in your publication. So from the beginning, it's better to take it into account, design it well, think about it. You can discuss with senior researchers in your field, people who are older in the lab, and to ask them how many tests should I do until how, how can I make sure that I have really a good control group to make sure that the reproducibility is well uh, performed in your research. Well, this is the end of today's presentation. Some takeaway messages about uh, reproducibility of experimental research. Well, when we do experimental research, we need always to ask ourselves, do the result hold up if I do this study again? Very important, and this is the strength of experimental research. So, first of all, seek internal consistency and reanalyze your data. Show error bars on your data and tabulate your data in the supporting information. Show data from calibration and validation tests using standard materials. Don't forget always also to cite any reference or protocol or standard that you use to conduct your uh, experiment. Share the input files and share your version that you used uh, of information. Share the software you used for the uh, analysis and for sure publish and open data if possible. This will be also useful. And finally, report the observational details of the material synthesis and treatment so that others, if they are finding your work and maybe if your work have a negative result, you were unable to fully interpret or resolve the research question, at least others can read your footnotes or your notes and build on them so that in the future we can have a breakthrough or progress. Well, this is the end of today's presentation. The presentation was about reproducibility in experimental research. I hope you watched the previous videos. I hope also you watched the following uh, video on the confidence in interval and randomization. For sure, share the, video, the playlist if you are finding it useful. Don't hesitate to comment, and I hope you enjoy this uh, uh, playlist on experimental research. Today's presentation was about reproducibility. I hope you apply it. It's a very important part of any experimental research. Good luck, and I wish, wish you all the best. Thank you very much.